The Johnson Wax Program with Biffer McGee and Molly. The makers of Johnson's Wax and Johnson's Self-Polishing Glow Coat present Fibber McGee and Molly, written by Don Quinn, with music by the King's Men and Billy Mills Orchestra. The show opens with So Sweet. Good morning, Mrs. Murphy. Here's your groceries. Oh, please don't walk across my kitchen floor. Can't you see I just scrubbed it and it's so hard to keep clean? Oh, I'm sorry, Mrs. Murphy. Why don't you let me bring you a can of Johnson's self-polishing glow coat next time I come? That's what all your neighbors use on their kitchen floors. That's what more and more women use on their linoleum floors every year. Because glow coat saves in three ways. Saves hours of work. Saves your hands and your back from tiresome scrubbing. Saves linoleum by making it last much longer. Glow Coat is self-polishing. It shines as it dries without any rubbing or buffing. Just apply and let dry. And in 20 minutes, your floors are protected with a beautiful, long-lasting polish. And Glow Coat makes your kitchen a more cheerful room by keeping linoleum colors bright and fresh-looking. All in all, that's a lot of good things for one product to accomplish. Order Johnson's self-polishing Glow Coat tomorrow. <laughs> At this moment, two people at 79 Wistful Vista are looking forward to a period of breathless adventure, thrilling romance, baffling mystery, and beautiful, glamorous surroundings. Yes, in a few moments, all this will be theirs, because this is the day when the mailman brings the new detective story and fashion magazines to Fibber McGee and Molly. I wish that mailman would hurry up. I left Handcuff Harper, the ace detective, in an awful jam last month. <laughs> Who's Handcuff Harper? Handcuff Harper? Why, shucks. He's the roughest, toughest, two-fisted slugger that ever... Oh, McGee, I wish you wouldn't run around with people like that. <laughs> Heavenly days, when we have such lovely friends and neighbors, you have to go get chummy with a rough, tough... Dad Bradford, I don't run around with him. I just sit here in my big chair. And don't bring him into this house, either. <laughs> Look, Molly, Handcuff Harper is a character... And a disreputable one, I've no doubt. <laughs> but he ain't even alive. Oh. Oh, I'm sorry, dearie. I, I didn't know. Is there anything we can do? No, I guess not. You see... It... Ah, here's the mailman. Come in. Good morning, folks. Good morning, Mr. Bagworthy. <laughs> Did you bring our magazine? No, nope, just a letter from Mr. McGee from the government. Oh, government, eh? I guess they're thanking me for being so prompt about my income tax. <laughs> ah, there's nobody like our old Uncle Sam, is there? You'll soon know, nephew. <laughs> Say, what do you mean by that? Search me, but he better learn to keep a civil service tongue in his cheek. <laughs> Dear, and I was counting on getting this month's fashion. Yeah, my detective magazine is two weeks past. Well, I'll be... Uh... Hey, Molly! Look! I'm drafted! Say, <laughs> hey, don't be silly. You're over age. Yeah, so was Frank Knox, but they made him Secretary of the Navy, didn't they? <laughs> I suppose you're going to be Secretary of the Army. No, I'd be satisfied to be Secretary of Frank Knox. <laughs> now, stop fooling me. You haven't even registered for the draft. Oh, yes, I have. When? Oh, weeks ago. I just got to thinking one day, I just thought to myself, I thought, Uncle Sam needs men. I'm a man, so Uncle Sam needs me. So I went downtown and offered my services. What happened when they stopped laughing? <laughs> Don't kid yourself. Nobody laughed. Fact of the matter is, they didn't want to examine me, but I insisted. I says, it was my right as an American citizen, I says. And they says, okay, they says, cough. So I coughed, and then I went. <laughs> McGee, I, I think you're fooling me. Let me see that letter. Okay, here. It's from the president himself. Well, for goodness sakes. 
Order to report for induction. To fetch her. The President of the United States to Fibber McGee. Greeting. <laughs> you get that greeting? <laughs> I'll bet they ain't that polite to the ordinary guys. <laughs> Go on, read the rest of it. Having submitted yourself to a local board composed of your neighbors... See, what did I tell you? ...for the purpose of determining your availability for training... That you have been selected for training and service uh, in the United States Army. Um, uh, uh, McGee, tell me, this, uh, this is all a joke. Why, why, Molly, you, you mean you don't want me to go? Well, if they want you, need you, of course I want you to go, but this seems so ridiculous, a man of your age. What do you mean, a man of my age? Why, I'm in marvelous physical shape. I'm in the prime of things. <laughs> anyway, it's my brains and experience they want, not my gorgeous figure. <laughs> But your eyesight is bad, dear. Good enough. How'd you pass the test for vision? Shucks, I've had that optical chart memorized since the last war. <laughs> yeah, but you have flat feet, too. So what? An army travels on its stomach. And you'll admit I got a stomach. <laughs> Without a struggle. You're even 20 pounds overweight. Say, McGee, are you serious about this? You, do you mean it? Molly, I was never more serious in my life. Cross my heart and hope to diet off about 20 pounds. Well, I... I hardly know what to say. It's so sudden. Let me sit down and think this over. Here, here's a chair. Thanks. Hand me one of those sofa cushions, will you? Sure. Which one you want? Uh, Daisies Won't Tell or Souvenir of Niagara? <laughs> Either one of them. So you've been drafted, you say? You betcha. I'm just struck all of a heap, dearie. <laughs> Imagine me, a war bride. Again. <laughs> Are you sure this isn't a practical joke? Sure, I'm sure. I took the examination, didn't I? And this letter is official, ain't it? Who'd play a joke like that on me? Mr. Gildersleeve would, for one. Well, he didn't, and I can prove it. I'll call him up. Hello, operator. Give, give me Whistle Vista 890. Is that you, Mert? <laughs> How's every little thing, Mert? It is, eh? What's that, Mert? Brother was what? Shot at sunrise. Heavenly day shot. Oh, she says he always comes home like that. <laughs> What's that, Mert? Okay, never mind. I'll call later. Well, I know it wasn't Gildersleeve anyway, Molly. Well, he wouldn't have done same, it. Same, I can imagine you in the army oh, again, dear. Oh, who goes there? Or advance and be ready. Come in. <laughs> How do you do, Mrs. McGee and Mr. McGee? I just stopped by to see if you were free to come over for a little contract bridge tomorrow night. No, Abigail, and... we can't make it. Oh, I'm terribly sorry. A previous engagement? No. I've been drafted, Uppy. Got to leave for camp tomorrow morning. Drafted? You mean that you've been... <laughs> oh, <laughs> Mr. McGee. <laughs> you say the most delightful things, really. <laughs> you drafted? Oh, <laughs> Be excruciating, Mr. McGee. Oh, no. Dad, rat it up. What's so funny about oh, that? Yeah. Oh, now, please, Mr. McGee, I can't stand it. <laughs> you had me running home and knitting you a sweater. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my, don't mind me. You go join the army and I'll join the girl brownies. <laughs> Abigail, this is no joke. You bet it's no joke. And if you ain't got any more respect for a member of Uncle Sam's fighting forces... Fighting yeah. forces? <laughs> oh, Mr. McGee. <laughs> the mental picture of you as a fighting force. <laughs> oh, my eyes simply collapsed. You with your, your flat feet and your bad eyes. <laughs> what? And your little round tummy. <laughs> oh, my spectacles. Oh, my. Well, remember my house tomorrow night at 8 30. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Mr. McGee, you... Oh, you fool. <laughs> hey, Molly. She... She didn't believe me. Well, of course she didn't believe you. I'm not completely convinced myself. Tis true. I feel like I would if me Aunt Sarah came busting in and told me she was going to play third base for Cincinnati this year. <laughs> okay, 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 deride. You'll be sorry when I'm gone away, up in camp, dancing every Saturday night with a beautiful army hostess. Yeah, <laughs> we'll both be sorry if I find out about it. <laughs> look, dearie. Yeah? Look Mother right in the eye. Okay. <laughs> now tell me, is all this on the level? 
Have you really been called for the Army? Absolutely. And I got to be at the station tomorrow morning at 5 o'clock. Oh. And I got a million things to do in the meantime. Oh. Write these things down, will you? Go ahead, dearie. Go to the bank. Go to the bank. A return library book. Library. Insurance. Insurance. Wire sponsor. Johnson's wax. Say goodbye to all my friends. Goodbye to Gildersleeve, Wilcox, and Mills. Is that all my friends? Name one more. <laughs> no, never mind. Now, let me see. Go to the bank. Cancel my laundry. Transfer my... Oh. the feeling this is all a dream. The idea of being drafted at your age. Oh, gone at Molly, my age ain't got anything to do with it, I tell you. I'm officer material. I can use a man who has reached the age of maternity. <laughs> you mean maturity, do you? I mean grown up. Besides, think of the military experience I got to offer. What military experience? You told me a dozen times you spent the last war doing kitchen police for three years. Well, Chuck, I couldn't help it. And I remember that snapshot of you with General Pershing, pinning a potato peeling on your left breast. <laughs> a decoration is a decoration. <laughs> Come on, here's the bank. Good day, Mr. McGee, Mrs. McGee. How do you do, I'm sure. Look, bud, this is important. I've just been called for the draft. Oh, we don't handle drafts at this window. See Mr. McAllister. No, no, he means he's been called for the Army. Really? <laughs> <laughs> yes, really, and look, I want all my funds put in Mrs. McGee's name. <laughs> the whole $39? $39.78, <laughs> careless. Well, folks, I don't know what the joke is, but uh, sign right here. There ain't any joke to it. I've been drafted. <laughs> All right. I heard they were mechanizing the army, but I didn't know they were doing it with wheelchairs. <laughs> Come on, Molly, let's go to the library. All right. <laughs> Kids, what can I do for you? Oh, hello, Mr. Oldtimer. Are you the librarian here? Yep. I want to return this book. What book is it, Johnny? Uh, the Rover Boys at Earl Carroll's. <laughs> what you bringing it back for? Can't do till next week. I know that, but I wanted to get everything cleaned up, Oldtimer. I've been drafted. Well, I suppose everybody... Hey! You've been what, Johnny? He got his notice from the draft board, Mr. Oldtimer. <laughs> <laughs> you did, eh? <laughs> I'll bite, Johnny. What's the joke? <laughs> there ain't any joke to it. That ratted, why don't anybody believe me? Am I falling apart or something? Am I so old and decrepit as all that? You may not be old and decrepit, dearie, but the only short pants you'll have from now on will be from drilling in the hot sun. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good, daughter. But that ain't the way I heard it. <laughs> the way I heard it. Be a little more quiet, kids. This is a public library. <laughs> that wasn't us. That was you. Hey? 
Oh, oh. Well, the way I heard it, one feller says to the other feller, say, he says, this Bob Hope makes a mighty funny picture, don't he? Yep, says the other feller, so does Fibber McGee. Look, sneers the first feller, I says, makes, not takes. <laughs> Nothing personal, Johnny, but if the shoe fits, it pinches a little, don't it? Well, 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 this is an unexpected pleasure. How are you, Molly? Hello, Fibber. Well, McGee just wanted to come in and say goodbye, Mr. Wilcox. Goodbye? Where's he going? To the Army. He's just been drafted. Oh, oh he has, eh? <laughs> well, that's great, Fibber. That's fine. Oh, so you don't believe me either, eh? Well, look at this notice, smart guy. Look at that. <laughs> See? Why, say. <laughs> this certainly looks legitimate, doesn't it? It would have fooled me for a while, too. <laughs> Where'd you get it? I'd like to have some to send a few of my Cut friends. Cut it out, Wilcox. This is legitimate. I got it in the mail this morning. That's right, Mr. Wilcox. I'm practically convinced myself now. Sure, sure. <laughs> Nothing like the good old selective service is what I always say. Ah, sir. Yes, sir. Like the Johnson Wax products. Oh. Just select the service you want and we can fill the bill. Oh. Johnson's Wax for floors and furniture. Johnson's Glow Coat for linoleum. Johnson's Car New for automobiles. Johnson's Shine Up for silverware. Johnson's Look, Le Carlo, this is on the level. If our defense program... Say, that'd make a swell Johnson ad. The Johnson Defense Program. Oh, my. Protect your floors and furniture against those filth columnists, dust and dirt <laughs> with Johnson's Wax, because... Oh. Please, Mr. Wilcox, can't you see he's serious? Is he really? I've never been more serious or in my life, Wilcox. Wait till you see me in that old olive drab and then... Ah, uh, why should olive be drab? Why doesn't olive use Johnson's Wax on her woodwork oh. and whistle while she works? Come on, Molly. Let's... Well, so long, soldier. <laughs> well, hello there, chums. Glad to see you. <laughs> Have a chair, Mrs. McGee. I'm sorry to butt in on your during business hours, guilty old man, but I wanted to drop in and say goodbye. Well, uh... Goodbye. 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 I'm, uh, hey, don't you even want to know where I'm going? He's on his way to camp at 5 o'clock tomorrow morning, Mr. Gildersleeve. Really? Why didn't you tell me, McGee? Well, I'd like to have gone with you. By George, I haven't been camping since I... I ain't going morning. camping. <laughs> I'm in the Army. I've been drafted. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Is that so? <laughs> My goodness, the country must be worse off than I'd realized, McGee. <laughs> Uh, what are you going to be, McGee? A drummer boy? <laughs> I guess you'll have to show him the thing with the stuff, McGee. Yeah. Look, Gildy, if you don't believe me, take a gander at that. What's this? That's the greeting. Yep. <laughs> the President of the United States, the Fibber McGee. Greeting. Yes, sir. It is. <laughs> Having submitted yourself to local board for the purpose. Say, this certainly looks like the real thing, doesn't it, McGee? <laughs> right. What's the matter with everybody? That is the real thing, Gildersleeve. He got it in the mail this morning. Oh, come, come, McGee. Don't give me that. Huh? Why should they call a pudgy little twerp like you for service? <laughs> Who's a pudgy little twerp? You are. He is not. I am, too. You are not. Then who is? I am, and you can't call me a pudgy little twerp and get away with it. <laughs> By George, I'll throw you out of my office so quick, you meet yourself coming in. <laughs> I'm in the army now, and if you so much as breathe down my neck, I'll have you court plastered. <laughs> court plastered. You in the army? Eh? I'll bet you think anti aircraft is Uncle Sam's wife. <laughs> 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 I guess you ain't been informed, Gildersleeve, that I was a pretty important guy in the United States Army at one time. Is that so? Yes. That, that's so. <laughs> Why, when I was in the Signal Corps, I had charge of all the carrier pigeons in the Army. Pigeons? I rode a motorcycle and towed my pigeons behind me in a little trailer. Uh. Pigeon towed McGee, I was... <laughs> all right. 
Pigeon Toad McGee, the proud possessor of personal praise from Pershing and Patan for my practical and painstaking projects and placing my pigeons in the precise places to peddle precious plants to the proper people, the personification of persuasion and the prince of personality, perennially plugging for peace without strife, but the rest of them peas are rolled off my knife. <laughs> Men singing Genevieve, Sweet Genevieve. Oh, Genevieve, Sweet Genevieve, the days may come, the days may go, but still the hand of memory weaves the blissful dreams of long ago. Sweet Genevieve, I the world to live again a lovely past the rose of youth was due in but now it withers in the blast I see thy face in every dream my waking thoughts are full Thy glance is in the starry beam that falls along the summer sea. Oh, Genevieve, sweet Genevieve, the days may come. Of guys leaving for camp, ain't there, Molly? Oh, and a fine looking group of boys, too. <laughs> ain't we, though? <laughs> I didn't mean you, dearie. Frankly, you don't quite seem to fit into a crowd like this. I know, but they'll improve when I start whipping them into shape. <laughs> hey, I better check in with my commanding officer and then come back and kiss you goodbye. Oh, McGee, I. Well, it's all so unreal. This has all happened so fast, you know. Yeah, I... I know. That's what proves I'm still youthful, Molly. The way I adjust myself so quick to new stuff. Yeah. Hey, wait a minute. That must be the officer in charge now. Hey, Colonel. Yes? Uh, you in charge of these men, bud? I mean, uh, sir? Part of them, sir? I mean, bud? <laughs> Why? Is your son going with them? No, no, he's going himself. Oh, I'm sorry, but we can't allow that. Only conscripted men will be permitted to board the train, madam. Oh, but I am so prescripted. I'm, uh, shucks, I've been drafted too, Colonel. Oh, is that so? <laughs> you better get the old boy out of the way, Mother. He's liable to get trampled. <laughs> hey, don't you mother me, you big Logan. I'll have you know hey, that... Hey, Molly. Hicks me on the up stay. Lay off. That guy's most likely be my boss for the next year or so. Go easy. Now, look here. I'm oh. sorry, mister. I'm very busy right now. I'll have to ask you to stand aside till the train pulls out. All right, boys, line up. Bag and baggage beside the track. You and the three, ten men. Now, what do you do, Sergeant York? <laughs> do you stow away on the train? Don't worry. I'll get in there, all right. Hey, fellas, make a little space for me in there, will you? I'm supposed I'll to... Uh, beat it, cop. I'll let Uncle Joe in, fellas. He may be somebody's brother. This is the army, mister. I'll take three pencils and a pair of shoelaces, Doc. <laughs> Pipe down there, you baby-faced bundles from Barber College. And you, number three, button your coat. Pull in your stomach. Hold your chin up. Ah, oh, horse feathers. Who said that? Yehudi. Who's Yehudi? Don't tell her, boys. She may be a spy. Yeah. <laughs> she looks like not a hurry. What's, What's the matter, matter with Harry? He's all right. <laughs> hey! All right, all right, all right. 
Now, wait till I get you guys in camp. I'll drill you punch. Who'll you... drill who? Huh? Oh, hi, Colonel. <laughs> hey, these guys won't make room for me in that line there. Now, look, my good man, you mustn't be a nuisance, you know. If you have a son or a nephew in this crowd, you'll be permitted... Oh, he hasn't you... got a son. I am a nephew. I mean... Now, look, Colonel, I belong in this bunch. I'm a soldier, too. You don't say. Well, you must tell me about Bull Run sometime. <laughs> Now, if you'll just get out of the way, folks. Now, wait a minute, Cy. I'm one of this bunch of drafted guys, see? And here's my notice to prove it. What are you talking about? Let me see that paper. There. Ah. Ah. Well, Colonel. Are you Fibber McGee? You betcha, bud. And if you want any help in whipping the rest of these cubs into line, I'll be glad When to... did you get this draft notice? Just yesterday morning, Colonel Bud. <laughs> I, I can't believe it. It's amazing. <laughs> That's what everybody says, Colonel. It just goes to show that if a guy is really sincere in offering his services to his country... Private McGee, why are you late? What do you mean he's here on time, isn't he? No, he's late. What do you mean, late? That paper says to be at the station at 5 a.m. on March the 18th. Yes, but it's 1941 now, and this notice is dated March 1918. <laughs> oh, sir, I'm in the wrong line. and Molly will be back in just a moment. Do you remember the fairy story in which the little brownies came in every night and did the good cobbler's work for him? Well, now, I don't really believe in fairy stories and gnomes anymore. But you know, there's just a touch of that brownie business in the way Johnson's Glow Coat keeps your linoleum floors sparkling and clean. It's true, you yourself apply the Glow Coat to the floor, but when your back is turned and you go on about your other work, Glow Coat dries to a beautiful, long-lasting polish all by itself, almost like the brownie magic. Glow Coat takes no rubbing or buffing at all. You simply apply and let dry. And the gleaming Glow Coat polish makes your kitchen cheerful because it keeps the linoleum colors looking like new. It saves you work all year because spilled things are quickly wiped up with a damp cloth. And Glow Coat makes your linoleum last longer, too, by protecting it against scratches and wear. If you don't already use Johnson's self-polishing Glow Coat on your floors, try some this week. That ratted luck. If I don't have Oh, a... now, listen, McGee, don't be downhearted. Oh, well, shucks. You certainly tried to join up. Yes, and I'm going to try again, too. I'm going to take a train down to camp and crash my way in. Oh, no, you'd never get past the guards, dearie. Oh, oh, I guess I wouldn't. Hey, that reminds me. You know what? No, what? We're lucky to be living in a country where they have guards around the camps to keep people out. Good night. <laughs> Good night, all. <laughs> This is Harlow Wilcox, speaking for the makers of Johnson's Wax and Johnson's Self-Polishing Glow Coat, inviting you to be with us again next Tuesday night. Good night. Hello, Mary. Want a ride? Well, to tell you the truth, George, I've got a new dress on. Do you mind if I walk? Uh Uh-oh, that's bad for romance. Nobody likes to ride in a dingy-looking car. And shucks, why should they when it's so easy now to wax polish your car with Johnson's Car New? In fact, Car New both cleans and wax polishes in one operation in half the time it used to take. The cost is low, too. So why not wax polish your car with Johnson's Car New, spelled C-A-R-N-U? This is the National Broadcasting Company.